So we had let a friend drive it. Something happened and we're stuffed in the back of this truck right now. So get ready for another rebuild series on this one. Good morning guys, welcome back to today's video. So we are here with the red truck. Uh, welcome to part two of the rebuild. Here we are again. Uh, we're gonna undo this tarp for now. Get it put off to the side. And so in today's video, uh, as far as I know, we're gonna try to work on getting this harmonic balancer out. Our plan hopefully is to get this timing chain cover off and uh, kind of assess the damage that was done here from the distributor being ripped out of the block. Thankfully, we see this little gasket that goes down and around here. So hopefully this part just comes out real easy. And we can slap a new one on. So to get the harmonic balancer off, kind of a deja vu video again, because we just did this. It's a one and one sixteenth inch socket. And on this one, it's a 10 millimeter. I mean, this is probably supposed to be metric, but this, this socket works fine. It's kind of the only one I have that fits. Uh, I'm gonna take out all the 10 millimeter bolts around the big bolt first. And I think my idea is going to be to wrap a ratchet strap around that, maybe tie it around the frame, bring it back, tighten it up real good so it holds it in place so I can loosen this. Because if you try to move it, the whole pulley moves. So now that we've gotten that out, we're gonna try the ratchet strap technique and see if it comes off that way. I'm not, I'm not gonna guarantee it does, but we'll try it. So thankfully for me, I actually didn't need to use the ratchet strap. I just kind of put it on here and just gave it a quick turn and it, and it budged right off. So pretty much loosen this by hand after you get all the other bolts out. It's one big bolt. I was gonna say, you don't wanna lose this, but it's kind of hard to lose this. It's the little ones with all the washers you wanna be more careful of. Now that we've gotten the harmonic balancer off, we're gonna take this off. It's just three little uh, 10 millimeter bolts. It goes to one of the coolant hoses. And then I'm gonna start cracking some of these 10 millimeter bolts all around the casing. So it looks to be like those three bolts that held in that uh, piece we took off is actually the thermostat housing. And since we're here, might as well replace it. Look at that, we got reinforcements. The boy Shaq's coming to help us uh, mess with the red truck. So as we just talked in the last video, the engine mounts are broken and you can see <clears throat> right up there, the transmission is pushed back and there's the, uh, the boot that it's supposed to be on. So we're about an inch and a half, two inches back. I think it's just the engine mounts. I think, I don't know what gave over here. Yeah, it looks like right here, maybe, I, I don't know. Something gave out over here. This is obviously twisted a little bit, this whole brace, but something had to have given out over here to allow the transmission to have the play to move back. But I think if we get the new engine mounts, we can pull the engine forward and reseat it where it needs to be. As we're taking apart the timing chain cover, it's a bunch of 12 millimeter bolts that sit all around it. I'm gonna go underneath the truck now and I'm gonna drain out the oil just so we don't have any uh, spills anywhere on the driveway. So right here is our drain plug. I'm not too sure what size it is. I'll let you guys know once I crack it. All right, so I just used a 916 wrench cause my toolbox doesn't come with a, I'm gonna imagine it's probably a 14. Look at that, perfect. So here we are, the oil's almost drained out. We're gonna let that drain out completely so we don't have any issues. We're gonna put this bolt right back in place. Let that seal up, let it drip off, or we can wipe it off with whatever. And now we can go back up to the front of the truck and start removing that cover. So what we got going on right here is instead of disconnecting the hose, uh, you know, we should be replaced anyway, but for right now to make things a little faster, we just disconnected the two bolts that are attached to the chain cover and we're gonna just reseal it later. Really nice gasket. Probably uh, back here, I'm not too sure how we're gonna get this off just yet. I think we're gonna try to pull the cover first and then disconnect it once we're over there. Or actually this kind of looks inevitable. I think we're gonna have to take off one of these clamps and just replace it after. So make sure when you're removing this cover, you have bolts up here. Make sure you get this little sneaky one back here. Right now we're removing the four 12 millimeter uh, long bolts that hold this, uh, I think it's your oil pump in. So we're gonna pull that out now. So now we're gonna remove this. Yeah, we got some oil leakage, just why we put a towel down. Awesome, this is out now. We're gonna go dump the rest of the excess oil in our drain pan. And I'll reassess this in a few minutes and make sure it's all right. See if it maybe needs to be replaced. Looks pretty good though. So our next step now, now that that's off, is we're going to take a flathead screwdriver or something, pry bar, and we're just gonna try to lightly pull this off, make sure, you know, while we're going, we didn't miss any bolts or anything like that, but this should just kind of pull right off at this point. 
And here we are now. We noticed there was another little bolt down here. There are some dowels that kind of help keep this in place. It'll help us seal it once we're done. But now we pretty much just gotta really carefully pull this off without getting any grime or debris in there. So we're gonna pull this off the rest of the way now. Got good tension on it. So we're here now and yeah, the timing chain looks really good. All the guides look pretty solid too. So I don't even think we're gonna mess with that at all. I'm actually really surprised how nice that's sitting. Wow. But we've gotten this off here. This is our, our timing chain cover, essentially. So it is a good idea to drain your oil first because you will have a mess and a half if you don't. I want to lay this down in here and I'm going to go pull it off the engine at my house. So kind of what our goal today is, is we are going to essentially replace that timing chain uh, cover. The rod for the oil pump fell out. So we gotta figure out how that goes back on. It seems like that little gear rides on this shaft. So probably watch a video and figure it out and re relay the info to you guys. But I have a new distributor at home and a, a new uh, cover. So if we can get that new cover on, I mean, that's a big step in today. That's one of the three big hard things. And another thing we tr we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to lift this engine. We're gonna remove the, we're gonna loosen and remove the transmission braces, lift the engine up, pull it forward and replace the mounts as well. So the engine will be sitting where it needs to. That'll be done. And after that, the next hardest part is just the, the body work here, the inner fender, like the structural work of the radiator support and inner fender. So things are looking really good. We're over here by my parts truck engine. Um, we're gonna be taking off this chain cover. You can see right here, we got the full display for the distributor. We can clean this cap up, no issue. What we're gonna have to do is literally remove all these pulleys, all these brackets out of the way. Um, probably do a lot of this off camera just because we're a little limited on time, but we're going to pull the water pump off, pull this off, pull all these pulleys off and get this just right out where we need it. And then we, uh, we'll bring it back over to the shop. Well, we've, uh, gotten the timing chain cover off the spare engine. We got a new thermostat right here, grabbing some lunch at McDonald's real fast and back to work. So what we got going on here is Shaq's working on the timing chain cover. And I'm gonna be working on the block. We're taking some razor blades and scraping off all the old gasket because we need a nice clean surface to put a new gasket to apply the cover. And then after also, we're gonna take a little bit of brake parts cleaner, clean some things up on the block and the timing chain cover. So we grabbed some Honda Bond and we uh, coated the whole outside and inside perimeter of where this is going to mount to the engine block. Now we're gonna start tightening it up. You can see it already here. I mean, it'll just come right off. We can take the thin layer off when it's dry. But man, it's looking great already. Really quickly, these are the, uh, this is the rod that goes to the oil pump and the distributor. And you can see that one's all twisted. So we have our new one right here, all straightened out if it focuses. So we're good to go there. We're gonna plug this in after we finish tightening up the timing chain cover. Travis, do it again. Thank you. All right, so what we got going on right now is we're gonna start reapplying all of these uh, little accessories with all the Honda Bond again. So we have this uh, piece that needs to go down here. We have this that goes to the thermostat housing right here. We will have to Honda Bond around the water pump once we get that back. And I'm not too sure about the distributor. I'm, I'm sure that's gonna need some gasket maker around that as well once we get that on. So here we are now, we have our new thermostat. We just need to seat this in here nice and tight and uh, we're gonna put the housing right over it. We're gonna put a little bit of Honda Bond and put our uh, bolts in. So we've gotten the truck tied up for today. It's uh, under the tarp again. We're gonna come back tomorrow and hopefully uh, maybe get this radiator support out of the way. We'll figure out what we have for time. I really wanna try to get that engine up and forward with the new mounts in place. So I'll see you all in the morning. Just to show you guys some of the work I'm really trying to put into this thing. Uh, it's getting a little stressful for sure. A lot of obstacles I'm trying to jump over right now. But anyway, um, I had to grab this. This is an engine hoist hook. We took it off the other block. Dumb idea. Don't do it. Cleans it up a little bit. Makes it look cooler, but it's really not worth it. Um, anyway, I got to pull these tires out of my bed so I can bring the engine hoist back home tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be trying to pull the engine, but I got to go make sure this would work on... An older, mile, an older model Nissan. This is for a newer style Nissan that has like power steering and things like that. So the other one is literally just like that bracket right there. This has this extra bit, but I think it'll match up. These look like the same bolt pattern. 
uh, holes that would be in the regular older model two-wheel drive. So we're going to go send this, make sure it works. Well, good morning, guys. We are back out here. Fun day. It's raining. <laughs> I'm loving this. So uh, I guess uh, instead of on tarping the engine right now because it is raining and I'm trying to prohibit water from getting into the engine, I think I'm going to bust open the garage and try to run something out here, some sort of drill. And we're going to start drilling out the spot welds that hold the radiator support in so we can get this right out of the way. So what's going to happen here is it's better to use a smaller drill bit and move up to a larger one. But right here you have these little divots they are called spot welds. And this is what's holding the radiator support in. So I'm going to take my drill and just start sending it right through these uh, little spot welds. You want to use a little bit bigger drill bit than what they are so you can make sure you break the welds. And I'll let you guys know how it goes. And just like you can see there and there, we drilled all the way through. And we're just going to keep going. So I actually don't think we're doing so bad. Um, you can see it's just kind of like a pattern. And you're gonna wanna make sure it's the same thing on both sides. We're still going, we got a lot to do still, but I'm actually pretty happy with how easy this is. Um, I only started the camera because I was gonna say I'm gonna remove this fender next just so I can get up in here. And I'm gonna try to hook something to this inner fender once the car is back on the ground and I can chalk up the wheels. See if I can pull the fender because it's it's tweaked this like it's tweaked in a little bit. Um, I'm not a professional body guy by any means. This is my first time doing it, honestly. So, you know, we're just gonna do it the best we can. It's all you really can do. It's not like we're going for any professional work. We're just trying to make things work with what we have. But yeah, I'm gonna rip off this fender right now with some uh, just 10 millimeter bolts, and that also means if I'm ripping off this fender. I'm also gonna have to remove the cowl and the wipers. So all of that's gonna come off right this uh, right this minute. Now we're really starting to get somewhere. We got the hook, we got the fender off. We got our cowl off. You have to take the cowl off to get the fender off. It's the only reason I did that. You can see here, found some more pinch. Uh, we found some more spot welds, and you can see I already started splitting this apart. Looks like I'm gonna need either. See, this is what happens is you can see where it's welded here, but I already drilled my hole, so I need to drill another one or kind of move it a little closer, maybe a bigger bit. But we're just gonna keep working down, splitting this apart. It's okay because this inner fender is trash. I'm gonna have to be a little bit more careful on this side. I might even go grab a, a bigger drill bit just so I don't damage this inner fender because we're gonna try to save this one. All right, so here we are about halfway done the radiator support removal. Here are all the holes you'll need to drill out. I'll show you a little bit better on the radiator support right now. We got, looks like we got uh, one up here. <coughs> we had just a couple all throughout here. Um, down here, there was a bunch and you have to drill out. There's like four right in this crevice, four or five. You got one at the very bottom. Maybe there's a couple I'm missing, one or two up here. So that's the gist of it though. You basically drill them all out. You take a flathead screwdriver and you just pop out these welds. I mean, these are really nice clean holes. So we'll clean this up once we're ready to weld it, but that's not for another couple days. Now my issue is here, trying to get to this bracket. I have to get this bracket off to work a drill into here to remove the rest of the welds. And as you can see, this is our access point. So we're a little screwed here. Maybe I'll have to cut this up. I'm not too sure. Maybe try to bend it back so I can access those bolts to get the bracket off. We'll figure it out. No stress at all. Well, not bad for someone who's never done it before. We got this obliterated radio support off the truck and now you can kind of really assess the damage here see we're a little kinked and bent up here the inner fender i'm not gonna show you right now because the rain is all pushed in it is it is pretty rough there this side is done we're gonna have to cut this right out of right out of place and weld something new in figuring probably somewhere around here just overlay you know a couple inches or something and just weld it on you know the best we can but not bad. Now I can hopefully get that bumper bracket off. So I'm gonna have to pause here for right now. I can't really work in the rain. I, I don't mind working in the rain. I already have been, but I can't really do anything else right now because I pretty much have to uncover the engine and water is gonna get inside of it, which we can't let happen right now. I'm waiting on some parts to come in. I'm gonna go see what I can do about getting the rest of the parts. Lovely, I'll fix that. Uh, getting the rest of the parts ordered. 
but um that's about where we stand right now so i'll see you guys all right field. guys we're back out here with the black truck i am feeling a little less stressed out i think we have all the parts ordered up for the truck everything says it's going to be here monday we'll see if that's true but even if majority of it comes in monday or whatever i think we'll be looking great i'm going to remove um the radiator support off the tarp the uh bumper bracket off the tarp and we are going to pull out the engine hoist and start getting ready to lift up this engine and get the set back to where it needs to be i'll uh, show you guys once i get it all on tarped so here we are now we got the engine hoist set up we're trying to do this as fast as possible so no water gets in the engine uh this is the bracket that we are going to hook up right here with the nuts that'll lift up the engine and pull it forward again you can see it got kicked back completely this is supposed to be like right here so we're gonna have to pull the engine an inch or two i gotta loosen the transmission brace that way we have some play we'll figure out if anything broke down there whether it was the transmission mount the brace or if anything at all maybe it just moved i don't know but again we're gonna just pull the engine forward and see what we can get out of this so we've gotten the pressure off of the engine mount so we're gonna try to disconnect this it's probably a 14 millimeter for all three nuts and bolts we're gonna have to remove there's one on the back side one right here one right here and same for the opposing side so we're going to get those off now now that we've gotten the engine mount out there it is on the ground all busted you can see there's the plates over there top of it ripped off we have our new one and you can tell the sides by the length and you can you can just match up with a bolt pattern down there but what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to rest this we're going to want to set this inside the engine first and then we can mount it onto the frame and then we'll do the same on the other side. We're back at it again. So we've gotten these mounts in place or on the engine itself. Now our goal is we need to make these holes meet up with these ones. We got, we got quite a ways to go before we do. So we're gonna disconnect the transmission brace and try to start pulling this thing forward. So we're having a lot of fun down here. I got the transmission brace removed. I am thinking that the, the thing broke or something. Maybe it wasn't tight. I, I don't know. We got a lot of play in here. We're just going to take off this bracket for now. I'm going to, I'm going to inspect it. I'm going to pull the engine forward a little bit, try to mount the mounts and then see what we can do about either replacing this or see if it just needs to be retightened and moved. I mean, we'll figure this all out in a few, so I'll keep you posted. So I guess this is going to be our plan. We're going to lower the jack, take out the jack stands. So the truck is even, so we're not trying to fight gravity to see if we can pull this engine forward now, now that the brace is removed. Might be a little tricky, but we'll see what we can do.